This is a graphing calculator, and well, it can calculate things and graph things. But what you might not know is that you can actually just straight up write code on it. So of course, I'm going to try and use this to make one or maybe even a few games that run entirely on the calculator. Let's see how this turns out. Surprisingly, there's already quite a big community around making games on the TI-84+, Plus, which is what I'm using, and there's some pretty impressive creations. I don't think I'll be able to reach this level for my first project, but it definitely gives a good idea of what is possible on what seems like such a simple device. At first, I had absolutely no idea how to program on this thing. Where is the program key? That one. So I looked up some guides for it and found this official one that is meant to kind of just help you learn with challenges and examples you can try. Using this and the TI basic language, I wrote my first program, which uh, was literally just one line of code that prints this message. That's crazy. But it worked, so I made some more code, this time for a program that takes your input and squares it. Yeah, obviously, again, it was very simple. But examples like these helped me to become familiar with how the programming language worked and somehow gave me the little bit of fun that you sometimes get from learning new things and seeing them work, like encoding. I continued trying out a bunch more functions from the language, like if statements and even just formatting on the screen. But while doing this, I noticed that manually entering in all these lines and functions on the calculator was very tedious and very time consuming. So I looked for a faster way. Luckily, I stumbled across this program called TI Connect, which allowed me to connect my TI84 Plus to my computer and write code on the computer that I could then import straight to the calculator. This made the process much faster, and so at this point, I decided to challenge myself by making an actual game, albeit a very simple one, a number guessing game. For a number guessing game to work, you of course need to generate a random number and tell the player if it is higher or lower than their guess. It turns out that this wasn't too hard on the calculator. I just used this randint function for the random number and then used prompt and some if statements to check if the guess was right or not. Eventually, after playing around with the formatting and how everything gets displayed, I had a working number guessing game. And honestly, this made me really happy and proud, even for something so simple. But now it was time to stop messing around. This isn't just a regular calculator, it's a graphing calculator, and that means that other than being able to show numbers and words, it can graph or draw stuff onto the screen, meaning that it's possible to create a much more engaging game with, well, graphics. So I decided that I was going to try and recreate Flappy Bird, at least as best as I could. I looked on the documentation and found out how to draw shapes like this circle or a line to the graph screen, making sure to clear the screen and set the right dimensions beforehand. I realised that to make a shape appear to move, I could use a loop, where each time it runs, the screen would clear and then a shape would be drawn with a slightly shifted position, which after a few attempts, actually worked pretty well. I also figured out that you could set custom backgrounds for the graph screen, and after making a sky kind of one for Flappy Bird, this made me confident that I was going to be able to make a pretty decent game. That was until I realised that yes it works great with an empty square outline, but when I actually fill that square in with colours, it takes way too long to render each frame, so it's pretty much not going to be playable like that. Unfortunately, this meant that I was going to have to keep the player as just an outline, but I mean, oh well, I guess. Next, it was time to make this very bird looking bird actually flap. This was actually kind of difficult though, because as you might know, I'm used to making games in Unity which has a built in physics engine, so I've never actually had to code physics myself before. Luckily though, after some research, I was able to find some formulas and strategies which helped me calculate the velocity and acceleration and stuff, and then based on that, I updated the position each frame, and it worked, with it falling faster and faster the longer it falls for. I also made it so that when it detects that you press the up key on the calculator, a positive velocity will be applied so that you go up for a bit. And this made for an actually really natural and fun feeling flying experience. Now for the obstacles, the pipes. Using a similar random function to earlier, I made the code choose a random height on the screen for a pipe to spawn, and then draw some lines around the height to make the pipe. To make a way to actually die to these, I just made some simple if statements that check if the player's edges are inside the pipes. Of course, there also needed to be a score, so I used a function that draws text on the graph screen to display a number that increases every time you pass a pipe, and it worked. 
Finally, all I needed was a death screen, so I made another image and made it so that it gets set as the background when the game ends, and well, this game was complete, even if it does look a little scuffed compared to the actual Flappy Bird. But I didn't stop here. I wanted one last challenge to see if I really knew my way around the calculator. So I decided to try and make some kind of version of Pong. You know, that arcade game where you hit the ball. Yeah. It turned out making this was actually not too hard. Learning all of the skills that I'd learned in the Flappy Bird remake allowed me to make some parts of the game way easier. All I really had to do was make the ball move with physics in two dimensions instead of one like in Flappy Bird, make it bounce by flipping the velocity on one axis after hitting the walls, and of course add the paddle that can move up or down if the arrow keys are pressed. With all of this added, it was simply a matter of adding a few more polishing touches and I had a working game in just a few hours, way quicker than I spent on Flappy Bird. Overall, even if they are a bit bare bones, I had so much fun making these games and trying and learning something new, and it definitely made me appreciate this calculator and the community behind calculator games so much more.